Yellowstone volcano super eruptions, almost as strong as the extinction level event of the Toba eruption 74,000 years ago. We're talking about the one that took place from Yellowstone 2.1 million years ago at Huckleberry Ridge. A tremendous amount of ash actually was just a little bit less than Toba, which was a super eruption which only left about 2,000 couples of humans left in the world, according to what the anthropologists have told us. A tremendous amount of animal and plant life extinction took place at that time, volcanic winter for decades. Well, the Yellowstone Huckleberry Ridge of 2.1 million years ago erupted 2,450 square kilo, uh, cubic kilometers of ash. Toba was a little bit more, 2,800 cubic kilometers of ash. The Lava Creek Yellowstone eruption of 640,000 years ago again was a super eruption that erupted 1,000 square uh, cubic kilometers of ash. That was they, they were both VI8. Yellowstone Lava Creek 640,000 years ago. The uh, Huckleberry Ridge 2.1 million years ago. Whereas the Yellowstone Mesa Falls eruption of 1.3 million years ago was much smaller. It was 280 cubic kilometers. Long Valley Caldera erupted 760,000 years ago. And that was 580 cubic kilometers, less than a VEI-8. In comparison, Mount St. Helens was very small. And you'll see the map of that later on. But uh, you'll see the pictures of the ash of the Huckleberry Ridge that we saw, and we'll see it again. It was huge mountains of it. Mountains. And at one point, you'll see this one coming up now. It was in two different types of directions. This one here. Because many a time, we had an eruption that was in two phases, as in this one. You have the bottom half was in one direction, the other half was in another direction. And you can see the Huckleberry Ridge took about half the United States. That was a VI-8, as we know, it was 2,450 2, cubic kilometers. That was the one that was almost as big as the Toba eruption. Tremendous damage worldwide to Toba. And obviously this must have had tremendous damage worldwide as well. Now we're going into this because of the recent Caldera Chronicles that came out on Monday. The personal commentary by the scientist in charge, Mike Poland. He said I would like, I would, uh, he wanted to uh, fix the term of supervolcano. He said I dislike the term supervolcano and what we should be saying instead of that because of the fact that we don't always get super eruptions from Yellowstone. We also get lava eruptions, which are much more frequent. And of course, they're not super eruptions. But um, we've had 80 of them since uh, 70,000 years ago. So I'll leave a link below for you for this. But this is the, Yel the Caldera Chronicles of Yellowstone. They're a weekly column written by scientists and collaborators of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. This week's contribution from Mike Poland, the geophysicist and U.S. Geological Survey scientist in charge of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. He says, I have a confession to make. I really don't like the term supervolcano, and I'd like to use this week's edition of Yellowstone Caldera Chronicles to rant about the topic. I'd also like to propose that we use a different term. The first known use of supervolcanoes actually from the mid-1900s. In 1925, geologist Edwin Hodge proposed that the Three Sisters volcanic region of central Oregon was actually the site of one very large volcano, which he called Mount Multnoma. This idea was later disproved by geologist Hal Williams, the same scientist who deciphered the geological history of Crater Lake in, in Oregon, and a review of Williams' 1948 book on Oregon volcanoes referred to Hodges' 
Three Sisters Hypothesis as a supervolcano. The term lay dormant, pun intended, for decades and was mostly absent from the scientific literature until the 2000s. The term super eruption had been used, however, to describe some of the largest known eruptions on Earth, like that of Toba in Indonesia 74,000 years ago. By the early 2000s, supervolcanoes started creeping into scientific articles. More general and widespread use of the term exploded, so to speak, following the 2005 release of the British Canadian docudrama Supervolcano, a disaster television film that centered around a hypothetical large eruption of Yellowstone. And ever since, the use of supervolcano has ahem blown up. Okay, I'll stop with the volcano punts now, he says. It seems innocent. Is there really a downside to the term? After all, it does conjure an eruption of incredible size, which is something that modern humans have unfortunately never witnessed, but it also oversimplifies the process and causes misunderstanding. Now you'll notice that we have some very nice pictures of the ash clouds covering. Look at this whole thing. The whole of the United States and Canada, of course, would have been covered. And upcoming is the uh, tough, the ash. Look at this thing. It's a whole mountain. And as we said before, it's in two directions because of the uh, two eruption phases of the same eruption the wind blow and the uh, currents. And this one is the uh, Huckleberry Ridge area, and you can see it's a whole mountain. A few kilometers from Mammoth Hot Springs, it's one of the most accessible, widely seen explosions of Huckleberry Ridge tuff. That erupted during the first volcanic cycle of Yellowstone about 2.1 million years ago. This exposure of the Huckleberry tuff is located about 20 kilometers north from the rim of the caldera that formed as a consequence of its eruption. The Huckleberry Ridge Tuff is also found on top of Mount Everts, a broad peak, and uh, to the distance of that, based on the distribution of the tuff, scientists infer a broad river valley probably existed between there and Mount Everts and the source of the eruption. The tuff filled or partly buried the whole valley. But uh, anyway, going back to the article, my opponent says, I have three main reasons for disliking the term supervolcano. First, it's trite. Remember, back in the 2000s when people used uber in front of the word meaning very, the pizza wasn't just delicious, it was uber delicious. The summer wasn't hot, it was uber hot. It was so uber annoying. Fortunately, the fad faded. The same can be said for supervolcano, adding super boils a complex and important aspect of volcanology down into something that sounds like a catchphrase. And second reason, he says, he dislikes the term. It's misleading. Calling something a supervolcano makes it sound like a volcano that only has massive eruptions. And of course, this is not true. Most Yellowstone eruptions that involve magma reaching the surface are lava flows. In fact, there have been about 80 lava flows of varying compositions in and around Yellowstone since the last time the system experienced a catastrophic explosion. Yellowstone is a lot more than just explosions, and calling it a, calling it a supervolcano is a gross oversimplification. And third, it's misapplied. Volcanologists have come to refer to super eruptions as those that have generated 1,000 cubic kilometers of ash and other volcanic products. This is equivalent to an 8 on the Volcano Explosivity Index, or VI index. It's a scale which is sort of like a Richter scale for volcanic eruptions. That means a VI8 eruption generated 10 times more material than a VI7 eruption and 100 times more material than a VI6 eruption. For reference, the 1980 Mount St. Helens eruption was only VI-5. The 1991 eruption of Pinatubo in the Philippines was VI-6. So VI-8 is really truly epic. 
Why is it then that volcanoes that have never had VI eight eruptions are called supervolcanoes? For example, the largest eruption of Campi Flegri in Italy, that happened about 39,000 years ago, was a VEI-7. Yet Campi Flegri is also often called a supervolcano. Is it a supervolcano if it has never had a super eruption? My wise colleague, Dr. Jamie Farrell, Assistant Research Professor at the University of Utah and Chief Seismologist of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, likes to say that there are no supervolcanoes, only volcanoes that have super eruptions. I couldn't agree more, Mike Polo says. So I have a suggestion. Let's ditch the use, the overuse and misrepresentation and a misapplied supervolcano term, and instead let's call them caldera systems. This would refer to any volcano that has experienced an explosion massive enough that the surface has collapsed into a partially emptied magma chamber. Campi Flegri, Crater Lake or Oregon and Yellowstone would all qualify. And if you must use super, use it when referring specific eruptions like the massive explosion from Yellowstone 361,000 years ago. That was a VI-8 super eruption that occurred from a caldera system. See, does that sound better? Yeah, the Yellowstone Lava Creek 640,000 year ago super eruption was actually 1,000 cubic uh, kilometers. So that does qualify as a super eruption of the volcano. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.